Hey guys, this is Ketan and today th the problem that we are going to be solving is ATM. So we are solving this problem from Codechef and this is a beginner level problem. As you can see, uh, th in the beginner level we are starting from the bottom. This is going to be a part of a playlist and I'm going to be solving all of these problems. And uh, the problems that are going to be solved are not only going to be from Codechef, they are also going to be from uh, other sites like Lead Code, uh, Hacker Rank, and uh, various, uh, various other sources, platforms. Okay, so the problem that we are going to be solving is ATM, and uh, the problem code, code is HS08TEST. Okay, so let's read out the problem first and then maybe we can uh, start by understanding the problem statement. So Pooja would like to withdraw X amount of US dollars from an ATM. Uh, the cash machine will only accept the transaction if X is a multiple of 5. And Pooja's account balance has enough cash to perform the withdrawal transaction, including bank charges. For each successful withdrawal, the bank charges uh, charges half a dollar. Uh, and cal So calculate Pooja's account balance after an attempted transaction. Okay, so Pooja, if... Okay, uh, Pooja has account in an bank and she would like to use ATM and the ATM has some rules so if Pooja is trying to withdraw X amount of dollars from the ATM so first of all first rule is that X should be a multiple of 5 so so what we uh, we can just uh, understand this simply like when we go to our uh, local ATMs uh, the uh, what's the smallest denomination we get in India like 100 rupees 100 is the like smallest denomination that we can get so uh, in the same way maybe in the US uh, maybe in these uh, specific ATMs so five dollars is a minimum uh, you know uh, denomination that it will accept so we have to put our amount in terms of multiples of five at least so that it will accept the amount uh, otherwise it can't process that amount and then and then also the, there's a second rule that obviously Pooja's back account balance should be greater than uh, or equal to sorry uh, should be greater than X because we are also having a half a dollar of transactional charges so we ha this will be added to X uh, when we are trying to do the transaction because if you want to do the transaction you should have another half a dollar to pay to the bank uh, to basically you know uh, clear the charges uh, bank charges okay so these are just uh, constraints so x is x is uh, definitely greater than 0 and uh, less than or equal to 2000 and which is uh, uh, as you can see puja wishes to withdraw so th that's the amount the po that puja wishes to withdraw and then we have uh, y which is puja's initial account balance so output uh, should be a, si a single number which is her account balance after the transaction so uh, transaction could be successful or a failure uh, in either case we have to output the bank balance so let's see an example so if we uh, if Pooja tries to withdraw $30 uh, so she has an account balance of $120 so after that it should be 90 but it's 89.5 because we are also considering the charges for bank transaction so these are all to be checked and then we have examples for incorrect cases so 42 so this is rejected because it is not a multiple of 5 so straight away it's rejected uh, we don't even need to check the balance and then uh, those fees and etc so and then this is the last case where the amount that she is asking is actually greater than 120 even though it is a multiple of 5 it is greater than 120 so obviously we can't withdraw more than what we have Alright, so let's jump into the solution quickly. Uh, I'll be solving in Python and if you guys want to see the code in other languages like C or Java, uh, uh, please uh, drop it down in the comments and uh, I'll see what I can do. Alright, okay, let's do it in Python. So first, what are the inputs? Uh, so 30, uh, we are taking two numbers, so these are not integers these are actually floats because it could be one 
20.5 dollars the account balance could be 120.5 dollars so let's just take it as float so we have first we'll be taking x and then also y but they are all uh, but they're both in the same line so what do we uh, we can do is uh, x comma y so x comma means these will be considered as tuple or just you know assignment uh, assign uh, this is a special type of assignment and then we can do map function map of float comma uh, input so as input is in string we need to split it but don't worry guys i'll just uh, i'll do one thing i'll just code it and then i'll explain what what's happening over here uh, so we took these values and then the first thing we need to do is if x percentile 5 equal to equal to 0 then we need to continue and then if x is less than or equals to 5 Oh, sorry. Uh, x plus 0.5. This is put to 0 0.5. This is not equals to y. Then uh, then what do we do? We just print the y minus x. This is a y minus of x plus 0.5. Okay. Else we print y here. And then also again, you can just print the y. So this is for else again. This is to custom input. Let's just run it and see if it's working. So we get we got eighty nine point five. Or else we could just do one thing, yeah. Uh, so if this is the case, you know, because we are print, we are doing so many conditions. Instead of these many conditions, let's just do one thing. We'll just change the y. Y minus equals to x plus 0 0.5. And then after all of this, we'll just print the y. So this is simpler. So let's just run this once and check with the first condition. Okay, it's working. Let's check with the second condition. We should get 120 over here. And it's working. And then let's check with 300. Uh, we should also get 120. It's working, alright. So let me just explain this code to you guys. Uh, so we are taking the two variables x and y and we are initializing them over here. So map function, uh, for, for those guys who don't know map function, let's just study the syntax of map first. Let's see. So as you can see, uh, whenever you, you have any doubt guys, just go to the Google. So I'm just showing this so that you can understand better because uh, we're just going through the syntax of it. So let's see, uh, map, so this is the syntax. It takes a function, it has two parameters. It takes a function and an iterator, okay? So uh, here, here, what are we iterating over? We are iterating over the input. So let me just uh, go through this statement first. So this is input. 
this is to get the input and then we when we call this function we get a string you know uh, the input will be taken as a string then uh, what I'm doing is I'm sl splitting it so when when I use the split function uh, we can use a parameter but uh, I didn't use it because the default parameter is a space so when uh, when I use a split function what it is doing is the string that that will actually be taken through the input is this whole string and then when when I'm using the split function it is splitting the string into 42 is a string and then 120.00 is another string right guys so th there are two strings now when I split this uh, using the split function so this is splitting it and then the it, uh, so what what values uh, what values do we have over here 42 as a string so we are not changing the format uh, yet we are not changing the data type yet so we have 42 and then also uh, 120.00 all right so then uh, so these two values are here in this iterator case uh, this is the parameter we are passing in place of the iterator and then uh, what are the other parameter this is a function parameter right so we are passing a float function so float uh, I wrote float there but actually float is a function in Python so so float is a function when you pass a value let's say an integer 5 and when you pass it to a float function it will change it to 5.0 so it will basically change the data type of the uh, you know uh, value uh, and it will change the uh, value from integer to float or if it is a string let's say 42 uh, uh, as we're seeing here 42 is in the format of string and then when it passes through the float function it will change it to 42 the, the, the same value but it will change it to 42.00 so it in the in the format of float it will be converted from string to float all right so what uh, so basically what we are doing is we are passing a iterator so this iterate, uh, iterator means generally a collection of uh, a collection of values let's say so what are the values we have here 42 as a string and then 120 as another string so these values are being taken over here as an iterator uh, a collection and then each of them so map function actually is like a loop map function actually runs like a loop so it does what it does is it goes through each of the element in the iterator so what elements do we have 42 and 120 so first it goes through 42 what it does is it takes the 42 and puts it in the float so we got it is converted from string to float so that value is put into x because x is in the first place and then we also have y so 120 is again run through uh, the, uh, the iterator has the next value as 120 so it is run through the float again and then that result is stored in y so why did I put only two values? Because we are uh, we know exactly uh, that we are we are only going to have two values. So in some cases uh, the input could be uh, dynamic. Then what we need to do is we just put a list in place of uh, these single variables. For example, let me show you. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, so if I wanted to if I wanted to pa uh, pass a sequence of names and then store them in a list so we can just say names equal to and then so map function actually uh, returns an object of map it doesn't return a list so we need to change it from uh, map functions uh, uh, sorry map object to list object so we need to do list function and inside we need to write the map function and then float and then uh, input dot split so when we pass a uh, sequence of names in as the input then what it does it it takes all of those names sorry uh, we shouldn't write float here we can just write as uh, uh, input dot split but l let's say we are passing ages of different people and we don't know how many ages are going to be there so let's say we uh, we are passing some values we need an average of those values so then we can do what we can do is we can just take uh, input as a string and then split all of those values uh, with spaces based on spaces uh, in some cases we can also get a comma instead of a space then we can just put comma in the split function this is how it's it, it's done okay we need to put uh, quotes and then double quotes and then double quote or single quote and then inside that we need to put the comma representing that this is the splitter you know uh, this is uh, we are splitting it based on this uh, this character and then 
uh, it is sent through the float function so let's say we have 1 2 and 3 these are the values that we are uh, passing as the input so then 1 passes through the float function remember 1 is in the form of string when we take it in the input it is passed through float and then it's mapped into uh, sorry uh, these all are collected over here so 1 and 2 and 3 and then they are made into a list and then that list object is set to names okay so names holds the uh, set, uh, list object then we can use it for other processing okay so this is this is like a standard way that i do uh, yeah so uh, i think you guys understood uh, this part of the code so this is uh, this might be a little bit too much to take in if you are just starting because you know, this is uh, not the first choice for me but this is very simple as you go through it a uh, couple of times uh, and this is ve uh, this is very helpful for me personally so this is what I use and then let's go through the next value so next we are just uh, checking the rules over here these two lines are checking for the rules so the first rule is it should be a multiple of 5 so we are checking if it is a multiple of 5 using the percentile then if it is then it's going to enter here if it's not then it's obviously going to exit and we, we are ju just directly going to print the balance amount so that's fine so we we basically took care of uh, what will happen if it is true and then what will happen it is if it is false also so we took care of both the conditions over here and then uh, let's say if it's true and then we also need to check for other other conditions like it should be greater it should be sorry uh, the amount plus the charges uh, so see uh, we should consider the charges too uh, because they are part of the transaction and then i'm just checking them as a one unit i'm checking it as so if the amount that she is requesting plus the charges is less than or equal to account balance then i'm just changing the account balance okay so i'm just basically saying she has withdrawn the money so i'm just changing the amount so I'm updating the Y. So then uh, it's done and then it will exit out of this if condition and also later out of this condition because we are ending the indentation. There's no indentation more, right? So yeah, the updated value will be printed. Let's say this if condition fails. So we took care of what happens if it's true, right? And then we need to check what happens if it's false means she doesn't have enough balance then what's happening is it is basically coming out of this if condition 2 and then as it's as it did not enter into this second inner if condition it won't be changing the value so what we'll be getting is the same uh, amount right all right so so this is very very straightforward and very simple program uh, yeah so we got these answers let's just submit this yeah so it's asking for submission let's just get this over with and guys if you have any doubts in any part of my code please don't hesitate to ask just put it in the comments uh, I'll try to read all of them every day and I'll just answer as fast as I can Alright, so as we can see, this is a correct answer and we can also see the time it took for it to process these things and this is just a solution number and this will be helpful if you want to check our solution again. Alright. So it's done, right? Okay. Alright guys, so that's the ATM question of Coachef.